All right, today I'm gonna show you guys my King's Fall builds that I'm bringing to the raid tomorrow. First time ever, I'm playing Hunter in a world's first race. Come watch it tomorrow, twitch.tv slash let's go, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, it's gonna start. I'm gonna show you guys most of the weapons that I'm going to be bringing into the raid, as well as my armor mod. It's pretty basic and standard stuff. I'm not gonna sit and dwindle too much on all the weapons because a lot a lot of you guys, like if you understand, or if you've watched one of these before, you understand why most of the we these weapons are good or important. So I'm just gonna kinda give a brief explanation. Izanagi's, good for burst damage, anti-barrier sniper, gonna clap barrier knights. Wither Horde, good for choke points, clearing at lots of adds at a time, as well as passive damage on a boss. You shoot a boss with it, you swap to another weapon, start spraying them down. Note that you shouldn't have more than two people on a team running Wither Horde though, because if you both stick the boss, only one Wither Horde counts. So one person sticks the boss and one person puts it at his feet. Thoughtless, just another legendary sniper that you can use in the kinetic slot. You can use whatever you wish. I do like this one though. I probably would use it for succession. Pardon our dust is a blinding grenade launcher. I'd probably recommend having one of these in the kinetic slot and the energy slot. Uh, you can choose your preference there. Blinding nades are busted. Only really need one person on the team to blind all the ads and then everybody else clears them. They won't shoot back. Slug shotguns. I would have one for each slot of these as well for Golgoroth because he is a very close range crit based boss. You might have to throw on Luna Faction boots on a warlock on your team to be able to reach him, but I don't think you'll have to do that. But just in case, have it ready. Arbalest, really good for pass or not passive damage, sustained damage, decent burst damage, and has anti barrier all in one. This thing is one of the best weapons in the game right now. You run out of special, you can always swap to Outbreak. This is good damage, or probably the best primary damage that you're gonna get without being a special weapon. Explosive rounds, scout rifles. I'd have one of these in the kinetic and in the energy as well. I'm going to try and have one of each affinity. I don't have a solar one, unfortunately, but we'll make do without it. Explosive payload, for those who doesn't, who don't know, does not have any damage drop off. So you can hit at any range, it'll hit the same number. SMGs, SMGs and scout rifles are the go-to. Have stuff for close range, have stuff for long range. So if you need to swap between, you can do so. I have the submission, this is the role I have on it. I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. One important thing to note about these mods, you'll see I have boss spec on most of these. Boss spec is nice, because I believe it's 7.6% on base. If you get later into the raid and you start having bosses that are taken, or bigger enemies that are taken, you might want to switch to taken spec so you can get a 10% damage bonus instead of the 7.6. Especially for champions, that's going to be very nice. First and last out, that's one of the choices of my uh, slug shotguns. Again, you can choose whatever you, you might want to have. It depends on the uh, the mods that you're running to. If you have Phantomite on, I'll get into that in a second. Burst snipers are good to have. Again, you can have that kinetic or energy slot. Aikilos is a very good one to have. High impact reserves with four times the charm, tac mag. As far as SMGs go, I'm trying to have one of each affinity. That way I can crack shields and also use that along with Font of Might. Same with, like I said, explosive round scout rifles. So vouchsafe is my void one. So this is the one I have. Explosive fourth times the charm, nothing crazy, just a basic roll in case I need an arc scout rifle. Then forbearance, the most busted gun in the game. You guys know how this thing is. If you have a uh, chain reaction on it, you shoot it at the floor, the whole room explodes. That'd be really good to have, especially if you're running an arc subclass and running the, um, which one is it? The beacons, arc fragment. Then heavy slot, heavy slot's really important. I think the most important thing, which is similar to the scout rifles, is to have a linear fusion of every affinity. Arc solar void. And this is very important because when you're getting Font of Might, when you pick up an elemental well that matches your subclass, it grants a temporary damage bonus. Base is 10 seconds. And that stacks with well. That's the only thing that stacks with well or bubble. Most people are gonna run well and I would highly suggest it. People are gonna sit and argue in the comments about, oh, this does more damage overall, blah, blah, blah. It's more about the fin affinities than it is anything else. If I was gonna pick one, I would do Cataclysmic. And this is what I have on it. I have bait and switch, busted perk. Fourth times the charm, enhanced battery. That's what you want. As far as rockets go, rockets would be good to have as well. You only really, really need one person running Galahorn. That way everybody else gets the Wolfpack rounds. Especially if I'm on Arc, I'll run something like Hothead. Again, four Font of Might. Basically just in a loop with this stuff. If, my, if I'm on Void, I'm gonna use Red Herring. I have Lasting Impression and Field Prep and Alloy Casing on there. I'll have an Eager Edge Sword for movement just in case I need to Shatter Skate across the ships if I get the opportunity to. You're probably not gonna be using a sword too much, so I wouldn't worry about that. If you're looking for a good uh, 
linear that you might easily have access to, Sleeper will probably be a really good option for most cases. I do think the Legendaries would be a better option though if you have any of them or all of them. So as far as armor goes, the nice part about Star Eaters, which is the main, this is like the structure of my builds, is I can do this on Blade Barrage, I can do it on Tether, and I can do it on the Gathering Storm, the new one. These all do insane damage if you have Star Eaters. They are bugged right now. It only goes up to times four instead of times eight, but it still hits really crazy damage. Highly recommend it. One thing that you could swap to on Tether is Orpheus Rig, so you can get that longer Deadfall Tether. And you could also, if you're using Mobius Quiver, you get the extra shot. As far as the armor mods go, I just switched these up. So I'm running Elemental Ordnance. Every time I get a grenade kill, it's going to spawn a Elemental Well of uh, whatever subclass you're on. Seeking Wells, the Wells are gonna come to me. Font of Might is going to give me that huge damage buff for weapons that are associated with my subclass. Again, if I'm running uh, solar subclass, I want to run all solar weapons. It'll, it allows me to stack the uh, elemental ordnance. So I have two of those on. Every time I get a nade kill, it's going to spawn two elemental wells. Basically just trying to feed into Font of Might as much as I possibly can. What nade am I running? I'm running fusion nade. Always, like, dude, fusions are so good. They do so much damage. The only other thing that I would run on uh, Hunter is I have a build for Omni Oculus as well. If I need to spam the team with invis to give you even more damage resistance on top of the uh, 10 resilience I already have. Again, this is one of the most important things. I didn't mention this yet. 10 resilience gives you 40% damage resistance. And it's, it's, it's the most busted thing in the game. It's like walking around with old protective light 24 seven, but with full health bar. This is the most important stat. Rezil, then recov. 100% shoot for 10 Rezil if you can. It's probably going to save... It's going to save you more than a few times. But um, as far as uh, Omni Oculus goes, it's basically the same thing. Just spawning as many wells as I can and uh, using those for damage reduction. Or not damage reduction, sorry. Font of Might. So I keep building... If I'm on Void, I'm going to be running all Void weapons. So I'll probably have the Taipan on. And then uh, probably like Vouchsafe and... Or swap this for probably like Father Sins here. Again, it's dependent on the encounter. But the most important thing with the, the mods is spawn as many wells as you can to get Font of Might. That is the biggest thing you can do. All right, so don't mind the weapons. Here's my Warlock. These are all the abilities that I'm running. Fusion nades are busted. Make sure you have this on so fusion nades explode twice. Icarus Dash. And then no particular rhyme or reason but behind specific fragments. I just like these ones personally. And then as far as the armor stuff goes, I have Time Dilation, Seeking Wells. Okay, so my armor mods on Warlock are all revolving around me getting nade kills again with the um, Elemental Ordnance thing. So every time I get a nade kill, it's going to spawn a Solar Well. And I'm going to have Seeking Wells bring those wells to me. It also brings them to my teammates. If I make a well, it's going... The Seeking Wells works for your teammates. Then Font of Wisdom, so not only is Font of Might going to give me more damage, which is really nice. Font of Might is on her helmet. I'm going to get a uh, faster super regen. This gives you tier 10 intellect for a few seconds. Font of Wisdom is very nice. And the nice part about Starfire, this is the biggest thing about the whole build. And the reason that I'm running Emperift, you place down Emperift, you basically just tag enemies and you get infinite fusion aids. You can throw those things everywhere. It does a absolute shit ton of damage. And you basically, you can, you can just sit and infinitely chain things and make a ton of wells. Okay, so for my Warlock build, I have a few different things going on here. I have Font of Wisdom, which when I pick up a solar well, it's going to give me more super, so I got my well back faster. I have Font of Might, which is going to give me that damage buff that I already talked about for solar weapons. Don't mind the loadout, by the way. Every time I throw a Fusion Aid, Elemental Ordnance is going to make a Elemental Well. Seeking Wells is going to bring it to me. And then I also have Well of Life as well. When I pick up Solar Elemental Wells, it's going to increase my regeneration. Which is really nice because if I'm running Starfire, I have to run Emp Rift. I can't run Healing Rift. Because Emp Rift, when you sit inside it, that's how Starfire works. You shoot enemies and you get your nades back, like, basically instantly. The nice part about Starfire is it also works with Well as well. So you slap down a Well, you start shooting things, you just get infinite grenades, and you can start making... Uh, basically infinite wells for your teammates. You just fusion nade everything. It's insane. Nothing too crazy for the Warlock build. I might switch to something Arc as a last resort, but I really don't see myself doing that. 
I am pretty much committed to playing Hunter or just playing well on Warlock because that's easy mode. You guys know how that goes. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Come watch the race live, twitch.tv slash 10 a.m. Pacific time. We will see you guys there. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.